I was praying about what I can speak to you. Because you are a church of prayer. And uh, everybody has a strength. And your church has a strength of prayer. Because your pastor has a strength of prayer. When we came, he added that strength to our congregation. And then he gives that strength to your church. But the more we pray, the less we work. Or the more we pray, the less we pray. Prayer is like a computer. Nobody is an expert in computer. If you think that you are an expert, already another project, uh, another, another app is coming, another, another thing is coming, and then you, you, your computer knowledge. Yesterday it was 100, but today it is 98. And tomorrow, if you are not careful, it will go to 70, 60. Even the computers are like that, isn't it? If, if you buy a if you buy 1990 computer, you cannot get a battery for that. If you go there, which year computer you have? 1990. Are you related to Thomas Alva Edison or somebody? <laughs> See, even the computer, it's like our prayer. We all pray and we have to pray. We developed an unwritten slogan in our church, East West Community Church, when I started nearly 25 years ago. And by the way, since you have invited me, I want to invite you, <laughs> not to every Sunday, but to the 25th anniversary, which will be in April, and we will send. It will be two days, Saturday and Sunday. We are still struggling with Saturday, with Sunday. <laughs> and so as soon as we decide, we will let you know, and at least for one session, you can come and bless us with your prayers. And in that church, we developed this slogan. When we work, we work. When we pray, God works. Why we have to pray? Because as I said related to the computers, we go for refreshing courses. We go to learn more and more and more. And in the school of Jesus, Jesus did many things. Jesus lived a very humble life. So we have to Learn from Jesus to live a humble life. Jesus lived in utter poverty, they would say. And sometimes we came from poverty, but we are in plenty. We have to learn poverty when we go back. So his disciples come to ask him, Lord, you have to teach us something. And they were comparing Somebody and asking this to Jesus Christ. At that time, there was a, a very good guru who, who was, whose name was John. And John taught his disciples how to pray. And this disciples of Jesus, they went to Jesus and said, you know, you know, Mr. Jesus, uh, there is another teacher over there. His name is John. And he is teaching his disciples how to pray. And we are your disciples because John said, follow you. So we came from John to you. And uh, you are doing so many things. You are doing miracles. You are changing water into wine. You are making blind to see. Uh, but... Uh, uh, don't teach all those things now. We want to learn one thing from you. Teach us to pray. Teach us to pray. If you teach us to pray, then other things will come. Other things will come. If we pray, blind will see. If we pray, lame will walk. 
if we pray water will turn into wine or wine will turn into water whichever you like and whatever the need is teach us to pray i want you to count 1 and 2 if if uh, uh find a neighbor and you have to say one and she uh, the neighbor should say two one, two you are one you don't have a neighbor so you find a neighbor and go near him so everybody find a neighbor and then one two one two decide one two one two yeah one two one two yeah now uh, it's very easy don't go three four five it's only one two <laughs> <laughs> so now all the ones raise your hand and then touch number 2 and push <laughs> not like that but <laughs> now now number 2s push number 1 <laughs> that's the title of my message <laughs> push if you uh say that pray until something happens many years ago i went into a white church youth room and they wrote this push pray until something happens push in luke 11th chapter verses 5 to 8 Jesus told a story about pushing. Luke 11th chapter 5 to 8. If uh, someone can get before me, you could read that. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend? And go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. and he will answer from within and say do not trouble me the door is now shut and my children are with me in bed i cannot rise and give to you i say to you though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend yet because of his persistence he will rise and give him as many as he needs some more pastor yeah that's it and uh he says uh, i have a, a new living translation let me read that he will get up and give whatever you need not because you are his friend but because of your this is a is a wonderful translation it says because of your shameless persistence imagine the story in the middle of the night i go to pastor rajan's house and knock who is that i am i am pastor nyanaya your friend you know that old friend with the little goatee yeah i know you pastor what's up i say i have a friend his name is rahul is a young man he travels a lot he comes at the midnight i don't have anything in my fridge can you check if you have milk if you have bread if you have anything pastor it's 12:30 in the midnight didn't you call could you couldn't you call me before you come you are coming and knocking at my door please go i'm in my night dress I said uh, Rahul is very hungry my friend is very hungry please open the fridge and see something please go away go to 711 <laughs> I say I check them they closed at 11 it's already 12:30 here okay third time fourth time fifth time sixth time seven times okay close your eyes and don't look at my pajamas i will throw the milk and the bread not because he was my friend but because of my shameless persistence 
why i was so shameless because my friend was hungry i am praying for my hungry friend and i am using my friendship it's not working properly but something is working my persistence is working my continual asking pleading is working my pushing until something happens i am pushing i am praying and god answers our prayers and today i also want to uh um uh, uh take you to another story which god uh said in uh luke 18th chapter this is also an another wonderful story the first story is uh, about the prayer of a friend another story is not a friend she doesn't have any friend she is a widow she doesn't have any friend her friend died who was her husband and then people take advantage of such people widows orphans poor people and then somebody else was taking advantage of her and even took her to court and then there was a judge in those days when jesus told the story this could happen uh, anybody could go and knock at the uh, judge's door and then ask uh, uh, to favor them and uh, this lady was going and knocking at the at the uh, judge's door and then judge opened who are you uh mr judge uh your honor uh yesterday i came to your court yeah yeah i remember uh there was an enemy and uh he is doing injustice do me justice okay okay next week we will see next week nothing happens the case is postponed 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 but every day she comes and knocks at the door and knocks at the door and by the way who is this he is not pastor rajan he is a judge and the judge doesn't believe in god he is an atheist that's what jesus was telling an atheist just who does not believe in god who does not respect god who does not have anything to do with god if you don't do if you don't have anything to do with god you don't have anything to do with people also if you don't respect god you don't respect people also so he doesn't respect god he doesn't respect people so he doesn't care for anybody so this lady poor lady widow comes to him day after day and after day and the judge is little tired of it <laughs> in my in my translation it's a uh, very interesting it says but this woman is driving me crazy <laughs> the judge is telling himself this woman this widow is driving me crazy so i'm going to see that she gets the justice because she is wearing me out with her constant request in the previous story the friend wanted to use the friendship it didn't work but his continual request worked in the second story it's not a friendship but it worked and in both stories what god is trying to tell is one thing pray continuously and i have uh, four quick points to share with you today number one god was telling that they should always pray and never give up in tamil it's very nice soorndu pogamal jabam pannungal in english in some translations 
pray don't give up the literal meaning is don't get discouraged or don't worry don't worry if you worry you don't pray don't worry pray but we change the order worry don't pray we worry too much we don't pray god is telling pray more worry don't worry if someone will turn with me to philippians 4th chapter 6 and 7 philippians 4th chapter 6 and 7 let me read don't worry about anything instead pray about everything tell god what you need and thank him for all he has done then you will experience god's peace which exceeds anything we can understand his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in christ jesus i have been evaluating my own life every year end and every beginning of the year we evaluate and i felt that i have been a preacher but not a real prayer a person who prays i give messages about prayer good messages but i don't pray enough praying is also being in the presence of god your worship team took us to the presence of god and one one song i think one verse they were keep on singing your presence is like being in heaven so i started searching and uh, finding some books to read and one of the books is written long 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 time ago by one brother lawrence he was a roman Catholic, roman catholic monk he was not even a proper monk <laughs> if he was a proper monk he would be called father lawrence but he was not a father he was only a brother <laughs> and then he writes because i could not read and write more i'm i was not qualified to join the seminary <laughs> so but I, i i told the people that god called me so they they sent me to one place to work which is the next room which is called kitchen so i worked in the kitchen and uh, the kitchen manager said i i was not a good cook so he put me into dishwashing and i started breaking all the plates <laughs> and all the time he would yell at me and i would go and cry and then i cried to god so that i improved in my work which is dishwashing without breaking the plates and i give credit to god because he helped me not to break the plates whenever i broke again it was my mistake whenever i did not break the plates it was god's grace then i realized cleaning the plates is the work for god and because god help me not to break any plates anymore i am a good dishwasher people started coming to me hey brother lawrence how is it going well i am not breaking any plates now how you are a trained dishwasher no 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 it's by god's grace what do you do i pray 
you pray for not breaking the dishes no 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 i pray to be in the presence of god so when i wash dishes when i wash the plate i am in the presence of god so god and me are doing the plate washing and god helps me not to break because i am in the presence of god it's a small book title practicing the presence of god it was written 450 plus years ago and it was written not by lawrence because he could not read and write so whatever he told somebody somebody wrote it in french and published it and somebody translated in english and i am trying to read chapter after chapter and i am not able to understand anything it's such a nice wonderful translation but whatever i understood i am talking to you can you believe practicing the presence of god that is prayer and few days ago i read that uh, i developed a practice to be in the presence of god and i forgot everything and as though only god and me are in the world only god and me are in the world for some reason if it is a huge hall only two people are sitting remember that scenario only you and somebody else and if you don't talk what will happen you have to talk because there is no other person to talk and there is no tv there is no radio there is no anything there is no book only those two people are there brother lawrence is telling i felt like that every time i go to the kitchen only me and god i think friends we have to develop that kind of prayer life if we develop that kind of prayer life as paul is telling we will not worry we need not worry but we all worry we have our needs and the needs are pressing needs so we have to pray and we pray and god answers why god answers he is not like that friend who asks for food he is not like that judge who gave but he cares for us first peter 5 and 7 says god cares for us because he cares for us cast all your care upon him because he cares for you cast all your burden upon him I want to stop there and ask what is the burden in your heart this morning you have some burden isn't it maybe it's a small burden medium burden large burden extra large burden whatever size you have you can put it on him because he is big enough my god is big he used to tell the story of cs lewis who wrote the chronicles of narnia it's a amazing seven story book and in the in the book and three stories came in hollywood but it's changed I, i i read the original book so it is it is the original not the hollywood movie and in that there is a lion comes which is called aslan and they say it represent jesus the lion of judah 
and then in the first story uh, the the little children from england uh, lucy and her brother and another sister another brother four of them go to the land of narnia and then they got lost and finally they they met, they met this aslan and aslan helps them and they get uh, uh, everything and then they come home to london safely and then the second book third book by the time lucy or, or let's say lucy was 9 uh, and now lucy is 11 she has grown a little big and then they go back and now lucy goes with another another group of people and she tells hey in this land of narnia there is a lion called aslan and we have to find the aslan and and he will help and i said no 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 that's all imagination how a lion will help they don't believe in aslan but she believes in aslan and one day aslan shows himself to lucy and then lucy sees aslan and she tells aslan you are big now <laughs> and then aslan in his majestic voice lucy when we met you when i met you last time you were only 9 years old and now you are taller you are little bigger you are a 11 year old girl but the more you grow the more bigger i will be the more you grow lucy the more bigger i will be the more you grow the more burdens you will have the more troubles you will invite the more problems you will get into all of you are grown ups except one or two who are still going to school for them the homework is the biggest problem for you it's not the big problem is it your homework or now the mortgage <laughs> the mortgage and the and the credit card bills and all the other bills they are the big problem not that little homework but when you were a college student home, uh, the homework was the bigger problem and you told your father told our grandma told our periyamma told pray and god will help your homework and you prayed and god help your homework and now you have big problems and here i stand whatever big problems god cares for you take it to him Amen. number 2 we take it to him but how long we could take it to him <laughs> number 2 is persistent prayer which means continuous prayer as a great man of god his name was elijah in tamil elia elia and he is a man of prayer suddenly one day he prayed lord this king is giving me a lot of trouble so stop the rain so the lord stopped the rain and if 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 the if the rain stop what will happen southern california will suffer i i read a, i read a uh, sign somewhere, somewhere uh, now we call brown as green <laughs> because no water our lawns become brown so now we call the brown as green so the whole israel was calling brown as green there was no water to land their greens no vegetables and then all because of the idol worship there so he wanted to challenge the bill priests and he called them and then this time he didn't pray to stop the rain but he prayed to bring fire oh boy already no water now now fire but the fire came and accepted his sacrifice and then he won the competition so it's a kind of cruel story but it was old testament story so he 
gathered all the wrong to ears and killed them single handedly very mighty man killing 400 plus people my goodness then what then he remembered he stopped the train by his prayer and the king was telling okay you killed all the people you brought the fire now bring the rain so he started praying and he has a young friend like rahul so he said i am praying rahul you go and check whether there is any cloud over there because the rain comes through the cloud isn't it even today it comes like that the same way rain never changes so he prayed first time Rahul came back, Pastor G, Uncle G, no rain. Elijah, no rain. Okay, stand over there. Look at the Mediterranean Sea. It's a beautiful sea. Number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. Maybe how many hours, we do not know. Maybe seven hours. After seventh time, sixth time, no rahul got a little tired his friend he said how long you have been praying there is no rain let's go home i'm hungry no 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 one more time seventh time and he comes back prophet there is some news what is the news it's i don't know how to tell that it may be a good news or it may be a very bad news what there is a cloud but the cloud is like this like a little palm oh boy that is the good news now tell the king to get the gasoline for his bmw and run <laughs> chariots he get ready the chariot and run for 80 miles and then before he was going into the gas station it started more clouds and before he started his chariot it started pouring and he was going in the chariot 65 miles speed and prophet elijah was running 75 miles speed seven times prayer he never gave up he pushed push pray until something happened I used to admire the story of uh, Hannah who did not have a child and his sister in this country they uh, confuse they will call sister in law so <laughs> so her sister in law was teasing her and then she said this is it i have to go to the church and she started praying and praying and praying and the pastor came and he said are you praying or drunk or something this is not even december 31st how long you will be in your drunken mood sister hannah and she said pastor believe me i didn't touch any alcohol but i poured my heart I want to ask myself a question which is a question to you also. What was the last time you poured your heart for something? It's easy to attend so many prayer meetings and make even the prayer as a ritual. And we are good in making rituals and we also good in teasing other denominations ritual. when we make our own ritual without any meaning but this man i told brother lawrence it was a ritual for him every day people make dirty of their plates he has to wash but that was not a dirty ritual he felt the presence of god brother lawrence practicing the presence of god whatever god has called you you don't have to become a preacher like me or a pastor like rajan whatever you do do it cheerfully 
do it prayerfully experience the presence of god pour your heart move on to the third point which is faith and prayer if you have the bible still open go to the book of james after hebrews first chapter 6 and 7 hebrew 1 6 and 7 but let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind let him ask without doubt which means with faith with faith we have to ask i usually tell two stories the first story is a uh, story of a lady who lost her electricity and no heater and uh, the window was in the east side the so sun can come with his powerful rays and give some heat but there is a a uh, little hill over there or a mountain so she read one day if you pray sincerely the mountain will move so she prayed one night lord move the mountain and the next morning she opened the window and the mountain was there so she said i know it i know even the lord could not move the mountain this bible says pray but uh, it didn't move that prayer i would like to call it a prayer is a prayer not without much faith in it but there was another lady the second lady is the same situation but also having some children in her home maybe an orphanage and then they read the story that if you pray the mountains will move and go to the ocean and then that mountain is full of rock rocky mountain like colorado mountains and then the next morning they open and the mountain was there and the children were saying god did not answer our prayer but the lady said no 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 god answered our prayers and the answer is coming in his time that is the faith prayer and faith and then that afternoon there was a big uh, truck came in into the compound and they came who is the owner of this property i am um ma'am uh, you have some rocks in your property uh, he said it's not only just a rock it's a rocky hill yeah 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 and that rocky hill um we want to buy that you want to buy a rocky hill or the property no no property is yours only the rocky hill okay and uh, she was uh, he was pulling a check it's uh, it's just $1000 as an advance and after we started moving we will give you another $10000 or $20000 or 100000 100000 yeah who are you people buying a rock oh we are from the harbor project we are working something so that we could put in the ocean and then the children were looking at the lady like how oh, you are all looking at me and the lady said didn't i tell you the mountain will move to the ocean the next day big big drilling machines came they started cutting the rocks and the children were clapping that rock now goes to the ocean praise the lord god is answering prayers in his own time that's called the prayer in faith i'm coming to the last point how god answers prayers number 1 kind of instant answers like a instant coffee nowadays there are so many kinds of coffees you put and put press the button and within one minute you want your own coffee it's better than starbucks wow 
you pray and god answers right away i don't know about the a uh, parking lot problem in your church but there are so many places you go maybe you go to costco one day uh, uh saturday it's it's full of cars you don't have any place to park you go round and round you have to buy something and go home but you you cannot find a parking spot so you pray because pastor said you can pray anything to god so is so this lady prayed lord uh, i need a parking spot as soon as she prayed one man was pulling so instead of telling thank you god for answering me she said don't worry god i got my passport <laughs> don't worry god that's called quick answers the second one is delayed answers and we already talked about elijah the answer was delaying but it was coming the answer was delaying but it was coming the third way is sometimes we want some answers and we get the answers it's delayed but it is better it is better answer as a famous uh, uh, evangelist dr billy graham he had a wonderful wife ruth graham and somebody asked uh, did god ever answer you in a better way <laughs> or he just answered you when you wanted so she said uh, if god has answered my prayer right away i would have married seven times wrong men Billy Graham would be the eighth husband. <laughs> But I completely prayed and prayed, God give me the best husband, God give me the right husband and finally he gave this man. This was a better answer than I expected. And the last thing is kind of uh, interesting thing how god answers our prayers he answers in a negative way because he knows the best the children come and ask so many things but the parents you don't give and god is our loving father he doesn't give I think you should not laugh for this. I wanted to become the president of India. Already you are laughing. <laughs> <laughs> you may you may think why I wanted to become the president of India because I was interested in politics when I was a college student and already I was born into a Christian family and no Christian can become a prime minister of India because Hindu majority but a muslim uh, became a president of india we had two presidents of india muslims and uh, uh, we never had a christian president i think we we agree they questioned him but uh, so i wanted to become so i could not become a prime minister so i wanted to become a prime minister uh, president of india so how in the world you will become i will join the politics i will become a rajya sabha mp because you cannot you cannot contest the lok sabha which is very dirty politics but uh, rajya sabha you can enter and then from rajya sabha you can become the president of india but god said no <laughs> <laughs> it's a negative answer and i am happy that i didn't become the president of india <laughs> even i would have become the president of india i would have only served one term like uh, abdul kalam or somebody <laughs> jesus when he was here he was human still theologians are fighting whether he was really human or not human 
but there is 100% he was human and 100% he was god this is a poor mathematics but a great theology because he was 100% human he had to pray and he prayed and most of the prayers and said on one time he he saw 5000 people and there were only a only a little boy with five loaves and two fish and he raised a prayer boom it multiplied and he stood in front of a tomb and he prayed a prayer lord i know that you will answer but because of these people i had to pray lazarus come out and the dead man came but he had to go these are all wonderful things but he was sent not to heal the people not to bring the dead people but to go and die on the cross for the sin of the world and that was the great redemption plan which was foretold to adam and eve and that time has come and tomorrow is that day and tonight he was in gethsemane shivering about the plan of god telling father let this cup go from me did the cup go from him no because he added another prayer let the cup go from me but let thy will be done you and i have many dreams you and i have many desires and we can pray and add this prayer let your will be done when we add that prayer when the negative answer comes we follow his will Paul was one of the greatest preachers in the whole world and he gave two thirds of the bible new testament he taught us to pray he taught us to understand who jesus was he taught us the great salvation plan and he formed churches and made the church administration church growth he was the first ever missionary he was the first ever preacher to the gentiles he was the he was the first uh, cross cultural missionary but he had a thorn in the flesh and we still do not know whether it is a physical thorn or a mental thorn or a spiritual thorn we we, we still debate but he prayed lord i don't want to live with this thorn whether it is stomach pain or whatever it is or a spiritual battle with the devil every day in my mind but god said no after a week he prayed so hard god said no and the third time this is it god you are going to listen to me i'm going to push you pray until something happen and god said oh yeah no but my grace will be sufficient for you my grace is sufficient for you you will have the thorn but you will have my grace take the thorn and live with the grace go it looks like a negative answer pastor rajan told that about the our second son danny some of you have seen him some of you have known the story only god knows how much we prayed for his healing and then as the days go he started suffering with pain and how much we prayed that god would take away his pain and give him a healing finally one fine morning he died and some people even said God did not answer your prayers it was a negative answer i said 
may be but may be not his pain is stopped and he got the total healing and but for that there was an association farm danny and friends which is helping people who have muscular dystrophy in october before i came i uh, the day i left tirchi uh, i was invited to go to a muslim's home because there's a little daughter fatima has muscular dystrophy and they know that i will go and i will pray but they invited me and i have seen so many other people coming into the knowledge of jesus christ because of danny and that's more important than his healing and walking from the wheelchair we know that we are all going to meet him and he's not in the wheelchair anymore but the, at that time the answer was no finally i would finish with the familiar story from genesis 32 24 to 31 the prayer of jacob which made him to become israel jacob was coming and esa his brother is coming to meet with him maybe with still anger esa could have killed him so jacob when he was going he saw angels coming up and down and he named a place bethel el means god beth means house house of god and then here comes a man and he fights with him and then he says bless me and then he says i will bless you by changing your name from jacob to israel i found the meaning today it's israel means two meaning prince of god or god who fights prince of god or god who fights and then he named that place peniel el means god peni means face the face of god once upon a time i saw the house of god now i see the face of god when you pray you see the face of god and you suddenly close your eyes because you cannot see the face of god you feel the presence of god you suddenly feel whether you are washing dishes or not you are like brother lawrence you feel the presence of god and you long to practice that presence of god as jacob practiced the presence of god in peniel what happened god touched him beware friends when god touches you you will be very happy in your heart but you may limp suddenly you will become handicapped suddenly you will have pain suddenly you will be disabled suddenly you will have more pain to walk i saw a movie and then in that movie esa was over there and esa was standing there like a rock and and jacob was walking like this and and esa is looking my brother went away happily and now he's limping what is happening and still he limps and come and kneels before him and he says you are my brother jacob look at you and how in the world you are limping now are you handicapped are you disabled uh, don't worry brother god bless you your face is like an angel's face i already see god's face yesterday your face is like an angel how a angel will kill him now yes i didn't kill him let's go he said i have little little 
babies and little little calves and little little sheep so you go in front of me brother i'll find my way and in the heart of heart he said thank you jesus thank you peniel who fought with me yesterday or helped me to fight with you and made me lame made me limping as examine our prayer life i think god touched you touched me reminding us to push pray until something happens whatever in your heart maybe god is asking you something how is your prayer life do you want to increase a little bit do you want to feel the presence of god when you work do you want to feel the presence of god when that job is disgusting washing the plates of others have you ever felt god and you alone in this world for sometimes maybe let's make a commitment those who want to feel the presence of god more will you stand with me and i want to pray maybe this tamil song we all know it's a good old song but we sing that jabate ketkum engal deva jabame jeevan jabam cheyam ஜீவியத்திற்கு இதுவே சட்டம் ஜபத்தை கேட்கும் எங்கள் தேவா ஜபத்தின் வாஞ்சை தந்தருளும் ஜபத்திலே தாரித்திரும் மேன்மை காணச்சு ஜபமே ஜீவன் ஜபம் ஜயம் ஜீவியத்தேதுவே சட்டம் ஜபமே ஜீவன் ஜபம் ஜயம் ஜீவியத்தே லவிங் ஹெவன்லி ஃபாதர் வி தேங்க் யூ ஃபார் யுவர் ஃபேத்ஃபுல்னஸ் teach us to pray o oh lord that was the request of your disciples and that is the request of us even this morning for the very simple reason we do not know how to pray we do not know how to enjoy the presence of god when we were washing our dirty dishes help us to become like brother lawrence and do not complain about anything but to do the will of god and continue and continue and continue and continue till we get an answer help us to pour our hearts lay help us to pray fervently like elijah till we see that 
little cloud like a palm of our hand bless this church oh god and bless the pastor and his wife bless the people who come week after week thank you god again in jesus name